Okay, so I want to go through Ford, Tesla and GM's earnings, which we've just had. Okay, so Q1 results are in now. We've had time for the dust to settle as well and people to sort of consider what's going on. I want to go through both the financials and then the execution of these two companies. Firstly, from a financial point of view, how do you think they're getting on? How do you think uh, GM and Ford are sort of getting on with their uh, EV financials or the financials around those part of the business? And how do you think Tesla's comparing to those at the moment? Yeah, I think I think one is well ahead of the other one as far as um, where they are in the ramp of mass market vehicles. I believe that Ford is, is quite a bit ahead, especially now that GM discontinued the Bolt, which is... Uh, which was their cheapest product, and it's going to go sort of out of out of the market by the end of 2023. This thing started somewhere in the mid 25 thousands uh, in, the, in the United States, at least. So after that, if you look at GM's sort of fleet of vehicles that they're offering today, they really only have two other ones, which is the Cadillac Lyric that's selling right now. They sold about a thousand of those in the first quarter of 23, and then the Hummer EV from GMC, which they <laughs> very infamously sold two of them <laughs> in the first quarter of 2023. So outside of that, GM is really making about a thousand cars a quarter as it stands. If, if you remove the discontinued product, the bolt on its own is selling about 20,000 per quarter, but that's going to go completely away by the end of the year. Now, GM is introducing the uh, Equinox, the Silverado, and then uh, one other vehicle. I'm, I'm blanking on the brand, but they essentially have three EVs coming out that are supposed to take on this mass market moniker, right? This whole thing that, hey, this, these, these EVs are going to be much more uh, mass market. They should be cheaper to produce. But the key thing is that uh, GM's business, the EV business is unprofitable, but they don't tell us by how much. Whereas if you contrast that to Ford, Ford tells us how much the car business is not profitable <laughs> uh, by, I guess. Ford with the Mach-E and the Lightning, uh, the F-150 Lightning, in the first quarter, they sold about 12,000 units and they had negative 102% margin and that business lost about 700 million. And that's a really good proxy to understand how legacy car makers are performing in the EV segment. Now, if GM is anywhere close to Ford, uh, which they are less ramped than they are, then you would think that the GM side of the business with the Lyric and the GMC Hummer and with the Equinox and the Silverado and the other car that they're launching, those are going to be significantly, uh, they're going to be losing a lot of money for the foreseeable future. And so if we take Ford's guidance as a measuring stick for GM, Ford says that by the year of 2026, they, they should reach somewhere around 8% uh, net income margin on the entire EV business. As a contrast, Tesla in the first quarter is somewhere around around 11% with about 2 million units. And uh, sorry, with about uh, 440, 420,000 units sold in a quarter, uh, which is about 1.7 million yearly. Uh, and so Ford is ex theoretically will need to reach somewhere between 1.5 to 2 million vehicles sold in a year to reach that 8% profitability. So Ford has a plan to get there. Ford has talked about it. Ford has broken out its division, but now it's just a matter of execution. Uh, whereas GM, it's very hard to understand exactly what their EV business in, is doing because we don't know the breakout. And they don't show the breakout, I think, because they're only really making, without the bolt, a thousand units per quarter. Um, so yeah, I, I think Ford is, a, is, is ahead of GM, I think that their their leadership is definitely saying the right things, and they understand the EV market better. The frustrating thing about GM is that they've really made themselves a butt of a joke, unfortunately, by calling themselves the leader of EVs, but they are the second most farthest behind Tesla and Ford. The only other automaker that's behind GM is Stellantis in the U.S. And that's only because they sell zero EVs in the United States, really. So um, it's it's a bummer, but at least they're bringing out new products this year, and we'll see how they perform. So, but but we know we know what it's going to be like for the next few years because we understand how Ford, uh, what Ford is struggling with, and uh, GM is going to have that same exact path, but they're really a couple of years behind. 
And we've seen many companies, you know, whether it's Rivian or Lucid as well, reporting massive losses mm -hmm. per vehicle at the moment. How much urgency do you think there should be for companies like Ford and GM to make these cars profitably? Or do you think the urgency should be just ramp, 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 we'll pay for it later? That's a, that's a very good question. So I think Ford and GM probably suffer from a false sense of security because they have cash balances of about 20 billion plus between the two companies. And they have what they think is uh, in the car business and the gas car business, a, uh, a business unit that's going to keep them profitable for the foreseeable future through the transition. And so from that sense, I think there is not a lot of incentives for those companies to actually feel the, the urgency, right? Because leadership can be like, yeah, move as fast as you can. You, we, we need to get profitable. We need to get profitable. But uh, anybody can go on the balance sheet and look at their numbers, right? They can be like, oh, they, we have $20 blah billion dollars in cash. Very good. But once that car business starts to dwindle, dwindle, which it will, I mean, every single trend is pointing to this happening. And I'm confident enough in saying that the EV adoption rate is only going to increase moving forward. Uh, that's going to remove the money-making business from those companies quite quickly. And what will probably happen, if, if I were to guess, is that one of these quarters, either this year or next year, they're going to post probably a cash flow negative for the quarter, the one time, and they'll be like, hey, this is just a one-off. And then it'll happen again. And they'll be like, well, you know, there's a recession. And then it'll happen again. They're like, well, we just need to get our EV business a little bit more tight. And then it'll happen again, right? And this whole time what's happening is the gas car business, it's it's just dwindling and they're not getting the scale out of those factories. That's what my prediction is for what those uh, gas car, those legacy car companies are going to go through. Contrast that with a Lucid or a Rivian as a startup EV automaker. They don't have anything else but their balance sheet and uh, and just trying to get cars through those lines as fast as humanly possible. And in the case of Lucid, I'm very sorry to say a hope and a prayer, right? Uh, Lucid's balance sheet, they have about $900 million in cash. Uh, they're burning about, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, la, 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 I have to go back and look. I think probably like a billion dollars a quarter in cash. We'll have to put that up. Yeah. I, 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 um, I'll put it on the screen now. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> but but Lucid is burning through a lot of cash per quarter. Uh, their, their total liquid assets, they're saying is about $3 million, or $3 billion, excuse me. But there's a lot of doubt around how long that's going to last them for. If you look at Lucid's latest filing, they said they had a right to raise up to uh, $7.3 billion or $8 billion of additional uh, capital to fund their their ramp and the, the rest of the business. Whereas Rivian has, I believe, about $11 billion of cash on hand. And they have a, a, business, a business that's ramping well, much faster than Lucid's is. I think uh, the last quarter, Rivian sold about 7,000 or 8,000 trucks in the quarter, and they're projecting, I believe, 50,000 uh, or 30,000, somewhere between 30 and 50,000 units produced for the year from Rivian. So they ha they're, they're much more well positioned. But those two companies in Lucid and Rivian, I think, just have every incentive to move us as quickly as humanly possible versus your Fords and GMs because they have no other option. And that's probably one of the reasons why, uh, say, a Tesla was able to succeed is because they didn't have that, that security blanket. It was, we just have to make it happen or we die. Whereas that's very uh, working against GM and Ford. And then you layer on top of that their, uh, their union force in the factory, right? Where, and I'm not saying they're good or unions are good or bad, but unions are going to be an additional layer that the that the company has to navigate through to ensure that they're getting as many costs out as humanly possible from the EV business so they can be profitable. And then you have layers of management that you have to navigate through. And you have decades of politics that you have to navigate through. And you have a, a large percentage of the business who has never dealt with EVs that you have to sort of wrap your head around, right? It's going to be very, very difficult for GM and Ford to really drum up a sense of urgency, I believe, with the current culture, because the, the culture has been just eke out as much profits from the current lineup, and then we'll just slowly iterate on what we have. Whereas now they'll need to just completely throw out the playbook and come out with a brand new way of doing things. 
and I believe from anyone who has worked in a corporation before, I'm, I'm probably you know correct in saying this, that those two things don't live in the same building. <laughs> you either have a company that moves really fast and is willing to throw out the playbook, or you have a company that's extremely good at keeping the playbook forever, right? And just eking out every single bit of profit they can on that existing business. So it's just incompatible. And if and if one of these legacy automakers is able to to navigate through that arena, that, that sort of thing that's happening in the EV transition, then props to them because it's going to require a gigantic effort but I probably wouldn't expect more than a couple of them to be able to do that. And then if we think about Ford and GM on just an executional point of view, so putting putting finances to the side at the moment, even though that is really important, how do you think they're getting on there? And you know, how far into this journey do you think they really are as well to transitioning to EVs? Because they've got to get you know rid of or transition huge, like hardcore engineering departments, for example, everybody working on engine or everybody working on transition and we're ramping these products and it's new design what is the product roadmap you know how do you think they're getting on the execution and, and where do you think they are in that transition i think ford i think ford out of the say us legacy automakers they're probably the most ahead i know volkswagen from a uh outside of the united states has the highest volume out of any other legacy automaker if we don't count on each sort of chinese automakers right um, but Volkswagen has a lot of issues that are well documented, especially around software, and uh, and they have a platform that is not yet profitable, and is quite inefficient if you compare it to the other platforms due to how due to it being uh, there's a lot of component there's a lot of components that are shared between ICE and EV. For example, a lot of the ID fours, all the ID fours, which is Volkswagen EV, doesn't have a front trunk, and a lot of people say. Well, that's not a huge deal, but it speaks really more to the fact that they haven't optimized the frontal area to really take advantage of the uh, EV packaging uh, to actually make it as efficient and as light as humanly possible, which means more weight, which means less range, which, which means less performance, more costs, right? Monroe, Live, Corey and Sandy and those guys talk about this all the time. So I do think Ford is ahead from an execution perspective. If you look at the Mustang, the Mustang has a front trunk. It has great performance. I think it's a look, good looking car. It has uh, pretty good quality. However, they haven't been able to really ramp up the volumes as much as they hoped. I think through this uh, through this quarter at least. And the F-150 Lightning is really the first legacy automaker pickup truck uh, electric car that actually is performing quite well with, with the people that, that buy. They love it. The one weakness from that car is the range when you're towing or just all around range. It's somewhere between 250 to 300 miles for a, for a truck, for a full-size truck, and folks are not very happy with that. So, But at least they're trying. At least they're trying and they have something out there and they've, and they've stuck out their neck to make it happen. And they're brave enough to show us from a financial perspective how that execution is playing out in the market. So I would say Ford is, is trying their best, uh, but... History will tell if, I guess, I guess the future will tell us if it's going to be good enough or not. Um, I'm rooting for them. I hope they make it through, but the challenges are very real. And uh, as, as one would say, stuff is getting real right now <laughs> for them. And, and then GM, yeah, like I said before, they let's, let's wait and see how the three new EV platforms perform in the market. I have my doubts. I, they don't have the greatest track record. You know, they, they discontinued the Bolt. They discontinued the Volt, which was also like an EV hybrid car. Uh, which they, was a uh, one, I think, car and driver car of the year. They had to discontinue that because of low demand. The uh, Hummer EV again sold only two uh, units in the first quarter of twenty three, and then you have the EV one, which is the one that really started it all back in the nineties, I believe, which was discontinued because it was performing too well. <laughs> so, and that was completely recalled from everybody. If everybody watches the got uh, documentary, who killed the electric car, you'll see sort of the arc of of that vehicle. So. They don't have the greatest track record with EVs, so I'm not confident that their new offerings in 2023 and 2024 will perform as well as they're saying. So, but we'll see. I, I'd love to be proven wrong from that perspective.